Welcome to the Dog Nerd Show, where we geek out over our best friends. I'm Megan. And I'm Michael, and this is a show about all things dog. Hey, everybody. We have got a very important episode for you today. Today, we are talking about emergency preparedness with your dog in mind. Yeah, it's it's very important. We think about it for ourselves, uh, and sometimes in the rush to do that we forget that we have to take care of those guys too because they don't watch the news or understand it so they may not know that there's a bad storm or an event about to happen so yeah and sometimes we don't think about it for ourselves so if you're not thinking about it for yourselves you want to do that too so before we jump into it uh don't forget we love when you subscribe When I write my gratitudes every day, I am thankful for my subscribers is one of them. Um, So if you like our content, please subscribe and uh, give us a comment. We'll get to the commenter of the show at the end. Yeah, give us a thumbs up. And and if you subscribe, hit that notification bell to let you know it's uh, time for a new video from the Dog Nerd. So yeah, and all that stuff really helps us with visibility. So thank you to everyone who does it. We really appreciate it. We really do. Oh, hey, don't forget, if you want your official Dog Nerd sticker, email us, dognerdshow at gmail.com. Give us your address and I'll pop one in the mail for you. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I think we should get on with this show today. I think it's a very important one. Absolutely. So first things first, if you are going to start preparing for, like Michael said, a, a weather event or some crazy emergency or just like We had in March of 2020, you know, stuff happens and you need to be prepared. So make sure you have dog food on hand, about three to six months of supply and, you know, something sealed with a long shelf life. So go ahead and buy a few bags of kibble, stick them in your pantry, your garage, you know, as long as they're sealed up, they're good to go. Um, You know, even if you cook for your dog, like we tend to do, or you feed raw, if if things get crazy, you may not be able to do that. So you're going to have to fall back on kibble. So why not get some now uh, before prices go even higher and uh, have it ready for your pup? Yeah, it's important, too, that you, uh, Megan said, make sure it's sealed up. You want to make sure it's sealed up, especially if you're not keeping it uh, where you would keep your other food because you want to keep bugs and insects and stuff like that out of it. So, yeah. And uh, there's several several Mylar-type bags you can purchase. Uh, a lot of people use it for rice and things of that nature. But the other thing, and probably the more important thing for both you and your dog, is water. So you want to make sure that you have several containers of water stored away. You know, it could be gallon jugs or, or you know, you can buy a 24-pack of bottled water, you know, from your local store. Also, uh, you know, it wouldn't hurt to have a water filtration system. That could be a life straw. No, uh, we're not. We're not, we're not sponsored. Anybody. We're not <laughs> sponsored by them, but we're, we'd be happy to be. And then a, a, a water bladder system, like you would find in, um, say, a backpack or something of that nature. But water is extremely important. It should be the first thing that you're thinking of when you're thinking of prepping. Or, so so you know, I screwed up. We should have put that first on the list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, well, most people think food, and food is important. But water um, is really, really important. Yes. So, um, and in and, and saying that, you know, like when massive storms hit and power goes out, you know, that's where your water supply is affected because – If you need to boil water, well, what if you also don't have electricity if you're not on gas or things like that? So think about that. Think about, you know, maybe you have uh, water on your property, but you need a filtration system to keep yourself safe. So um, keep that in mind. So the next thing on our list is medicine. So if your animal requires any prescription medications, you'll want to have a three to six month supply on hand. So go ahead and ask your vet to give you a longer prescription, have that on hand, make sure you have it. So if you do need it, it's there for you. Yeah. And along with that, um, are going to be, you know, just general safety, first aid items, uh, topical creams, uh, wraps for sprains or breaks, uh, anything you can that you would do for yourself in a in a um, emergency situation or, or emergency preparedness with a first aid kit. You want to think along the same lines with your dogs, mm-hmm. uh, because you know if you do have to, you know, a storm hits and you have to traverse some 
rough uh, terrain, you could have abrasions or cuts or anything like that. You need to treat those so they don't get infected. So uh, I would do a a first aid kit. And we'll Um, probably do a separate episode on what to include in that first aid kit. So we'll, we'll definitely do a deeper dive on that. Yeah. Um, okay, next thing, your pet records. So go ahead and have your records scanned so that you can access them from your phone, but also have copies printed out, stick that in your dog's go bag, and we'll get to that in a second, but have those just in case your phone loses uh, uh, battery. You know, if, if you're going to save it somewhere like on the cloud, you, you may not have access to the internet. So I definitely think have, you know, images saved to your device, but also have paper copies just in case, um, you know, you need to access those. Yeah, that's extremely important. Another thing that's important that you probably don't think, uh, but if you get separated from your dog, one of the best things you can have is a recent picture of you and your dog. Uh, and two reasons why is if you are trying to find your dog you could show someone a picture and say hey look this is me and my dog have you seen it the other one is if someone has found your dog or or it's in a shelter you can show that picture to prove that that is your dog if in case uh you know there's no chip or they lost their tag or, or something of that nature so it's just it's just wise to have that so maybe just you know take a selfie with your dog this weekend Yeah. And always have those available. Like Michael said, like we've talked about that. If you lose your dog, always have a full body shot, a close up shot, know about those identifying markers. Um, The next thing kind of goes along with that is identification. So make sure you have tags that are up to date. And if your dog is microchipped, make sure that is always up to date. You know, yes, a dog's collar could get uh, caught on something and they could lose their collar or their tags. Um, microchips, you know, you you may find a situation where there, nobody has scanners or scanners aren't working or, you know, who knows. So w- we want to have double backup systems. So that's where the pictures come in handy. Um, but always make sure you've got tags and microchips that are up to date. Yeah, yeah. And, and you should always have a plan too, guys. You, so you know, there's certain situations where you're going to do what's called bugging in. And then there's going to be situations where you're going to bug out. And what that means is you're going to, you're going to wait out the event, you know, whether it's this ice storm or hurricane or whatever it might be, you're going to wait it out in your house or wherever you are. Usually the safest, unless it's like Katrina type hurricane. Yeah. Um, You know, you, you, you can tend to get into problems if you, bug out and yeah. you don't know where you're going or what yeah, you're or doing. you don't or you're not prepared yes. right so yes. so have have a plan if you are going to leave so if if uh there's a hurricane coming and it's Im- imminent and it's going to hit your area and you're going to leave you want to have uh the ability to grab quickly what you need and, and hit the road so and you need to know where you're going to go where you're going to stay and let somebody know that yes. and then and then if it's always best, and a lot of people do this, it's like, well, we're going to go to this place. Well, if that place isn't available, you need to have a backup to your backup. So you need to let people know that are close to you where you're going to be. Yep, and, absolutely. Uh, it's, always communicate. It's it's very important uh, because that can help you reunite with uh, your pet and your family members and your friends. And keep yourself safe, yeah. Right. All right, so the next item is a go bag for your pet. So you should have go bags for yourselves but also put one together for your pet. And just real quick, some of the items that you would want to think about having in there are extra harnesses, collars, leashes, and tags. Like I said, if a tag gets lost, you know, having an extra one is always good. Um, Medicine, food, water. So you can put that in one of those bladders so that's easier to carry with you. Travel bowls, poop bags, nail trimmer, first aid kit, uh, a pack. So if you have a larger dog and they can actually carry their own little backpack, you can have one of those. Um, but just uh, train your dog to use it before an yeah, emergency. Don't, <laughs> don't, just, don't just strap that on him in an emergency situation and be shot that he's like, I can't go with, it, with this. Yeah. You want to build it up just like you would. So if you're anybody out there that's into rucking, you know that you don't just throw a hundred pound bag on your 
on your back mm-hmm. the first time you do it, you, you work your way up to it. So the same thing with your dogs. Yeah. Yeah. Start with the empty bag on the dog for them to get used to it and then put stuff in it gradually. Um, so shoes, protective shoes. If it's a situation where you find yourself out in the wilderness mm-hmm. and you are, you and your dog are climbing through brush and mountains and stuff like that, you're going to want to have some protective shoes for your dog and you are going to want to have, um, tested those out and got them comfortable with well, them first. I will also say, so don't, if you're like, well, I'm never going to be in that situation. Also too, if it's a hurricane or, or a tornado, which sometimes they're, they were combined yeah. broken glass, uh, you know, in a winter scenario, the salt on the ground, salt that on the ground, their paws. So there's, or just ice. I mean, cold, I mean, you go outside yeah. and walk around in bare feet. It's in the cold. It's, it, it's not great. And we've talked about the heat. You know, if it's too hot and then your dog's, the pavement is burning your dog's yeah. feet, then you're dealing with a dog that has burns on its paws and you're trying to get to safety. So um, another thing to add to that is protective clothing. Yep. So if, uh, you know, maybe it's something that like a sweater or a jacket to keep rain off or to keep mm-hmm. them warm, you know, those of you in the north, you know, where you get a lot of snow and stuff like that, you probably have that kind of stuff for your dogs. Um, but that's important to have. So that's that's sort of the, 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 the things you want to think about of putting in the go bag for your pet. Yeah, yeah it's very important. All right. So the next thing is, and I think you, you already touched on this, but bugging in versus bugging out so yeah it's just you you just need to have know when to do it um and and you'll kind of know and if you listen to your to your local news they'll they'll help you um you know make that determination uh you do not uh, you know if you've got a senior dog and or a uh, medically sensitive dog yeah and and like it's a it's tough for them to you know make it around the block uh, go ahead and, and get out of the situation yeah, if, if, it's, you, if, if you know there's like a hurricane coming that don't 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 wait around yeah yeah just go ahead and get out of the situation get to safety so that you and your dog will be safe because there's a good chance that if you do have to bug out with him he's not going to make it yep yep and if you do bug out plan on about two to three weeks of food and, you know, a water bladder with water in it, and mm-hmm. then also a portable water filtration system so that once the bladder runs out and you guys run out of all your water, you've got a way to take some, you know, creek water or river water and clean it so that Filter you can, yeah, yeah, so you can drink it. Well, one of the other things too, that, uh, you know, there, a lot of small breeds um, can be uh, slow or they don't have the, Stamina. stamina to keep going when, when they need to so one of the things you can do is you can have a carrier for them which would be you know backpack or a sling pack or there's there's several in the markets we have we have a backpack and a sling pack we have several yeah we, we're we still several. trying to find the right one but but that allows you to to carry your dog uh a greater distances it will limit you a little bit of you know it depends on your physical fitness it'll limit you a little bit as what you can carry yourselves but the thing to remember is that you're probably going to be in a vehicle uh so so you you may not have to carry them that far um but you still you you should have it should have it yeah 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 for sure um so a generator so this is now where we're kind of going off to just general things you should think about so a generator for your home is going to help keep you and your pets safe when you are in a scenario where you're staying put. So think about the ice and snowstorms that hit Texas. A lot of people died because they did not have a way to stay safe from the elements. So if you have a generator in your house, you can keep your heat on. You can actually cook your food. Um, You know, you can run your refrigerator on it so that all your food doesn't spoil. So it's really a a good investment to have. So there's several different kinds, and we won't get too deep into that, but just remember... uh, there's whole home generators, which are the big ones that look like air conditioner units on the side of your house. And if you live in Florida or if you live in Tornado Air uh, Alley, you probably have seen those. But 
Then there's the portable generators. Remember, portable generators are meant to be used outside, so don't bring that inside. They're too noisy anyway to bring them inside. But also, portable generators come in two flavors. One is an inverter, which gives you clean power, and one is just a regular generator that just generates power. And you say, well, what's the difference? Well, an inverter generator is going to be nicer to your electronics. So you might want to look at one that can do that, but if you just need to keep the power on and the fridge running, a regular like generator you can purchase down at a home heart, home goods store will probably be uh, sufficient, all depending on where you are and how long the how long it's going to be. So, yeah, and that point about keeping don't putting don't put it inside. Also, don't run it right next to a window where you could have carbon monoxide coming in. So. Make sure you're safe with that. Um, keep gas in your car in case you have to bug out and in case there is a shortage. So when we had Snowmageddon many years ago, I, by the grace of God, happened to run an errand before that all hit. And I was like, I only have a quarter of a tank of gas. I should go ahead and fill up. And we knew there might be like snow flurries, but we didn't realize how bad it was going to get. Thank God I filled up my tank because I was in the car for so many hours I would have run out of gas. Yeah. So it's always a good idea as a practice to keep your tank full. There's a lot of people that like to run it down, you know, till empty all the time. But after a situation like that, you learn very quickly to always keep gas in your car. Yeah, a good rule of thumb is when it gets to about half a tank, go ahead and fill it up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, and then you'll always have at least three quarters of a tank of gas. Mm -hmm. um, so another one that's uh, super important is know where your local shelters are in case you get separated from your from your pet. Yeah. Um, because if that happens, usually there's people that will find your pet and get it to the local shelter or the shelters got their own people out. Law enforcement's working with them. Fire departments are working with them. So that there's a good chance that if you get separated, your pet will be in a local shelter. So, um, And with that, when we said have a picture of your pet, also have a hard copy, which we probably need to print off a couple. Yeah, we do, yeah. So, so that you can physically take that if you can't access your phone. Yeah. Um, and I do want to add, I didn't put this on the list, but something I thought about as we were talking is make sure you have some cash and then some, like, barter like something you can barter in case you're in a scenario where you need to buy some food or you know say say you're in a pinch and, and you don't have enough dog food you know is there someone that has enough that would sell it to you because if stores are closed that's not going to be an option for you if stores are open but they don't have electricity to run their credit card machines yeah you're going to have to have cash so so have cash and, and maybe some, you know, something that you can barter in case, you know, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, so much of our world is run in the digital realm now that it really, even if the Internet goes down, a lot of stores can't function. Uh, it becomes a cash only option at that point. And yeah. some stores don't even take cash anymore. So I it's kind of, kind of strange. but. But, that, you know, those are just a few tips that yeah. we wanted to throw out there as we're encroaching on winter. Uh, you know, so hopefully it'll be a non-event winter, but it usually isn't. <laughs> so we, and, want, and we like, want you to be prepared. Yeah, and like we all learned with uh, March of 2020, you know, sometimes everything just goes haywire. And you yeah, just I mean, supply to, chain issues, you know, gas and fuel, you know, is expensive. Prices and, are going up and up. So yeah, that food so, you buy now will be cheaper maybe than what Yeah, what especially if an event happens. Yeah. You know, then, then the prices go up. But, so, and I would say if you have anything to add to this list, like we are by no means preppers. So if you would have <laughs> no. anything to add to this list, please uh, comment. We'd love to hear what, what you have to say. Yeah. Um, and speaking of comments, let's talk about our commenter of the show. Awesome. And um, so this is really tough. Shout out to all the Scotty parents out there because you guys are seeing the, this episode and you are commenting. I, you might be the... The Scotty tribe might be the, the most commenting breed fanciers out there. So 
Oh my gosh. Like I hate to choose one. Um, Robin Wade. I have a little Scotty and she is the cutest and funniest little doggy ever. My Scotty is a girl, but she absolutely loves people and dogs. Very protective of our house and my family. Um, so shout out to Robin. Dave, I have two Scotties, a male who just turned 16 named Eddie and Nessie, my six-year-old female. They are both a handful. That, so that sounds like a terrier. Um, Linda Vera, I own a Scotty and am in love with the breed. My Mackenzie is a beautiful baby, very intelligent and sweet-tempered. My Scotty is such a sweetheart. I highly recommend this breed to anyone wanting a wonderful family dog. Well, thank you, guys. Yeah. I mean, that is... And we, I could go on. Yeah, I mean, Kristen there's a time. Kristen McIntosh, Solom, Solomon Jensen, Terry Huggins, Brian Laurie, Martin Smith. Yeah. Um, and then too old for this bleep. All of you guys have been uh, commenting wonderful things about Scotties, and we love hearing yeah, about we love the breed. Your we love to hear your comments. We love to, to interact with you guys in, in the comments, and, and thank you so much for that. Yes. So um, you can find us everywhere on social at Dog Nerd Show. Dog Nerd Show at gmail.com is where you can drop us a line. If you are interested in my books that are like Nancy Drew meets Animal Rescue, these books right here with the new cover here, <laughs> um, that is RileyCarsonSeries.com. And if you like Dog Nerd gear, go to Etsy.com slash shop slash hound and thistle. Yep. Awesome, guys. Well, we really appreciate this and uh, hope that you got something out of it. Until next time, bye. Bye.